Well, hello everyone. Pastor Ian, the Krabby Crafter here. I uh, just wanted to make a video. <clears throat> I had posted this uh, on the uh, Tim Holtz Addicts Facebook page and got a lot of responses from it. And so what I thought I would do is just uh, go ahead and make a video and kind of show you guys how to do it. Uh, hopefully encourage some of you to give it a try. This was made using last year's Halloween, Halloween Distress uh, mica stains. Um, and so I uh, actually used, I think we used a little fortune teller and some uh, Wicked Elixir there. Uh, I actually do have some of this year's, so I actually think I used Decade on one of them. But what I did was, and I didn't think about this, is I actually made this reversible. And so on the back side here, this was sprayed with oxide, carved pumpkin, um, uh, and let's see, I think, well, I don't remember what colors I use now, but then I went over this with just a mica spray, and I think I used tarnished brass, but I'm actually gonna make one for you and show you how we do that. But my wife kind of got the idea, well, you can make it reversible. So this is a Halloween side, and on this side, we're gonna put like a fall message, so we can go from fall to Halloween. So that's the one that everybody really commented on, and I just wanted to show you some of the different ones that I've already done. Now this is just using oxide. This is just using oxide. Uh, and you see how these colors really blend together. Um, and remember that with an oxide, the, the color is gonna sit on top of itself. If you try and blend it, uh, you're gonna get just kind of strange results. But just by using the oxides, and I really wish I remembered these colors, um, just by using the oxides, you're gonna get this really neat look. This is just oxide. There's no sheen on that. Uh, this one, again, is with the mica stains, and you can see how beautiful that is. And I think the colors that we used on this one, uh, yeah, we used some flickering candle, and then we used uh, a little a little bit of crooked broomstick, and then that green, is, I think, is the, it's either Wicked Elixir, um, could have been, I think, uh, I don't think we used Empty Tomb on that, but uh, let's see, oh, here we go, uh, Jack-O-Lantern. So I know we used Jack-O-Lantern, there's the Jack-O-Lantern, and then we used a uh, flickering candle, that's the yellowish color. And then that green there came from the Wicked Elixir. Uh, I know that because it might actually been Bubbling Cauldron. I'm not sure which one uh, you can see. They're pretty similar with the greens. It's a little bit darker, so it may have been Bubbling Cauldron. Uh, anyways, I don't remember. Like I said, we're fixing to do that again for you guys. So did this one, two-sided as well. Uh, and then this one again, just with the oxides. Uh, except on the top here, I did use the mic stain to give it kind of a nice shiny look on the top there. Okay, and then we've got the other side, which we did. This one I did use. Uh, I did use all the mica stains. This is that new Decade. Um, it might be Empty Tomb. I think, uh, I think that might be Decade. I don't remember. Uh, but again, you can see you can see the jack-o'-lantern and the flickering candle. And then I think what that is, is I really tried to spatter the decayed. It actually kind of looked okay. Kind of came out like a rotten pumpkin kind of look. And then the top there, that's just good old-fashioned uh, hocus pocus. All right. And then on the other side, of course, again, just uh, spray oxide. So we did that one. And then I've got these round circle blanks that I had bought. And I said, well, let's just, we're going to make some Halloween stuff with these. Uh, again, just using this side is oxide, and you can't really see it. I sprayed over it with uh, one of the mica sprays. Uh, again, I think this one, I'm not sure if it was tarnished brass or which one it was, but not a lot on there, so I may just leave it as is, or I may go back and spray it later, okay? Uh, my wife said these kind of came out looking like planets, and I said, they kind of do, actually, but we're going to cover them up anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, and then here's one just, uh, and again, I think this may have been, uh, carved pumpkin and uh, maybe orange uh, persimmon. I can't remember the color. Yeah, pink or whatever it was called. This one, we just tried some different stuff. And again, my wife says it came out looking like a planet, but we're going to cover most of that up. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, same way with this one. This one, again, spray oxides and this one with spray stain, uh, with mica stains. No, actually, this was oxides. And then I can see that over here, what I used, uh, I, I actually sprayed over it with the mica uh, mica spray. Uh, so, so here are the here are the mica sprays, uh, tarnished brass and antique bronze. Those are the two that I, I use the most. There's the third one, but these are the ones. Uh, pewter, I think it is, uh, brushed pewter. But I use tarnished brass and antique bronze uh, the most. And so uh, all you do is you just spray them with the oxides and then just put those over them. It gives them a nice little shine. 
still not as nice an effect as actually using these new mica stains, which I love. Now, this is what we're going to work on today. So I posted these on the channel and everybody loved these. And this was actually sprayed with oxide. Okay. This was oxide uh, carved pumpkin and um, I think just carved pumpkin and uh, I'll have to go. I think maybe wild honey. I'll have to go back and look and see. But we're going to grab some others and we're going to do this. Now, what I did on this one was, and I didn't even think about it at the time, was let's make these reversible. And so that's what we're going to do. Because originally I just, this was just wood on the back, plain wood. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if you actually had, it was reversible. I'm here for the candy, just a bunch of hocus pocus. So what we're actually going to do for this demo, <laughs> among other things, is we're going to stamp this on the back of this, and we're going to stamp this on the back of this. But I do want to show you something very interesting. I wanted to see what would happen if I used spray stain, not spray oxide. And I got to tell you, I you can you can see the difference on the video there, okay? Both of these, I, I, I wanted to, I said, well, I've got all these stains. Let me try my stains. So the oxide, as you know, is opaque, uh, whereas the stain is more translucent. But the stain, it, it just, it has a natural shine to it. The oxide didn't do that. And uh, I really like, and this is the same color. This is carved pumpkin and carved pumpkin. Uh, it's just, it's the same stain. It just came out totally different on the wood. So as you can see that there, it's really going to come down to what you want and, and the look that you want. So when we do this one, uh, and this is going to be in reverse, you're going to have one side that's just going to have that, and then the other side is going to be shiny. But we're still going to stamp over that with the uh, archival ink. So I'm going to go ahead and get some inks together and get everything ready to go. We're going to go ahead and stamp these because these are dry. Well, actually, we're going to ink some other wood first, and I'm going to show you how I do it. And then we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to go ahead and ink these because these are dry and ready to go. So we're going to get everything ready. Then we're going to play a little bit with these new mica stays and hopefully stains, uh, mica, uh, distress mica sprays. And hopefully that will give you, uh, 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 okay, I'll say it one more time. The new distress mica stains, as opposed to using the mica sprays, which just, you can put that over anything and, it, and it's going to give you that, that shine, either a brass shine or a, a bronze shine, okay? But we're actually going to work with the mica stains uh, on some other projects. But I'm going to get the what everything I need ready for this, and then we're going to show you how we do this, and we're just going to have a little bit of fun today. Okay, so went over to my stash and found what I had been using since I couldn't remember there. Carved pumpkin, spice marmalade, and mustard seed. You can see those beautiful colors, which are really nice fall colors and good Halloween co colors. On this one, on these two, we use the carved pumpkin and the spice marmalade. You don't if it was a little brighter, you would see some of that mustard seed, but because it's darker, that lets me know that these are the colors that I used on that. Um, but as far as the spray, let's see, and then we've got, well, there's some more spiced marmalade. Uh, let's see, just show some more carved pumpkin. On those other ones we showed you, did also use, well, there's another mustard seed. Um, we did also use some twisted citron and some shabby shutters. Uh, and that was that was a little bit tied in on one like this one where we tried to tried to just get some variation in the colors, and just uh, you know when it was all said and done, not a not a not a big fan of those, but we'll we'll still use them. We'll we'll make them work. We'll do something with them. But I wanted to show you the spray stains that I use: the carved pumpkin and the spice marmalade. Okay, you can see all right the difference between a stain and an oxide. And again, all I did it's the same exact colors. Okay, and here's the carved pumpkin. It's the same exact colors on the back that I used on the front. Just remember, you get that really neat sheen when you do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to show you. We're going to play a little bit. And we're just going to kind of show you how that works. And then we're going to stamp the opposite sides of those. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my splat box here. And we're going to lay that wood blank in there just like that. And we're going to start with the spray oxide. We're going to use... Uh, let's go with carved pumpkin and spiced marmalade. Let's go with carved pumpkin and spiced marmalade. But you just want to shake those up. Uh, I don't do the up and down shake. I do the sideways shake. Then I just look at the bottom. It's not coming. If I don't see it coming off the bottom, I keep shaking it. So I want to see that that sludge is off the bottom of my oxide. There we go. There we go. A little bit more just to get that nice and... All right, there. A little bit more. There we go. 
And I haven't done this with a stencil yet, so we may actually, with this one, we may come back and play with the stencil. We may do a little bit of that. So I'm actually gonna start with the carved pumpkin first. Let's grab that one. And then you just, uh, we're just gonna lay some down like that. And then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna fill in with the spiced marmalade. And we're gonna let that one and take a look at that. Not worried about those drops, they're gonna dry up, they're gonna bead right into the wood. Not gonna add any water, not gonna do anything to it. You can kind of see, and again, uh, let's see, we used oxide and oxide. Now it's got a little shine to it right now. That's gonna go away as this dries. As this dries, it's gonna look like that, okay? Again, that's the stain, okay? So just a, just a reminder, as that dries, you're gonna lose that shine. And those, those little spots are gonna actually they're going, to, they're going to absorb into the wood and work. If you're worried about it, you know, you can you can do whatever you want to do. You can tap them. You can bottom them up with a, uh, with a paper towel or whatever. But I'm actually okay with that. So we're going to move that one off to the side. And I'm going to grab one more because I want to show you the mica stains. The mica stains. And let's go with... I wonder what uh, kind of a weird combination. Let's see. Well, you know what? Let's just let's just play. Let's just play. We're going to use some hocus pocus, and we're going to use some flickering candle. And I'm going to put the hocus pocus down first. Get that good. And you always want to make sure. There we go. Got that sludge off the bottom. And I'm going to put the hocus pocus down first, and we're going to. There we go. Let's do that. And then let's come back with the flickering candle. Come back with the flickering candle. And just fill in there. And we're okay if those kind of blend over each other a little bit. Look at that beautiful flickering candle on top of the hocus pocus there. Oh, I really like that. I really like that. I was going to add... I was gonna add some empty tomb, or maybe some of that new decayed. Uh, yeah, I got to. I've got to. Got to put the decayed on there. Uh, just have to. Let's see what it does. You don't know if you don't try. And honestly, I, I've been doing this, and I haven't had. I haven't had. I haven't done this and had anything that I've come away and been disappointed with yet. At least nothing I couldn't fix. Let's just. Kind of, oh, just, yeah, let's hit that up there. I don't know if that's going to, oh, look at that on that. Yeah, yeah, let's throw it over that and maybe a little bit right there. And let's just leave that alone and let that dry. And let's see what kind of wonderful goodness we get from that once that one dries. So we're going to put that off to the side. And golly, I really want to do one more. I think I'm going to do one more. Let's go with the Crooked Broomstick. Let's go with the Crooked Broomstick. Uh, maybe, if I can get the rattling. There we go. Crooked and Fortune Teller. Ooh, ooh, let's see. There we go. Got to get it to shake it. Those ball, I didn't have these laying on their sides, and so I'm having to really work to get these shaken up. Okay, that one's ready to go. There we go. Fortune Teller's being difficult today. There we go. Let's get that. Yeah, that boy, that mixing ball. There we go. Hmm. I gotta say, I'm not too sure about this one. I guess we'll find out when we spray it. All right. Let's hit. This is gonna be nice and deep. This is gonna be a nice deep purple. Oh, I like the splat there. Kind of. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually, gonna, we're gonna leave. You know what? We're gonna see what happens. And then we're going to fill in. Oh, yeah. And I I don't know how that one's going to come out. I got a big splotch of fortune teller right there on the end. I could add some water to that if I wanted to. It's on wood, so it's not going to move very much unless I add water. I am not going to blot that. Or am I? Oh, I'm going to regret this. I'm going to regret this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. There we go. Oh, yeah. All right. There we oh, goodness. Look at that. Halloween-y goodness. Mm. 
Okay, I'm going to set that aside and let that dry. All right, so that's enough of playing with that. So when you're working with the wood, now you've got an idea of how easy it is. Just spray it on, let it dry into the wood. We'll come back to those and look at those once they're dry. So what I want to do now is clean up around here just a little bit. We got some overspray there. We got to get some stuff out of the way. Uh, we got to clean up and let's grab these guys right here now. And let's move this out of the way. Move all my blanks out of the way. We'll come back to those. We're going to stamp some of those for you. All right, so here we go. Uh, so we know we're using these guys here. I don't know how you do your store. I store mine in the packaging. I don't have the folders. I like everything. I have everything in little uh, trays. Uh, these are trays that I actually made years ago, and I actually just made these little paper dividers to put all my mica, mica spray stains in here. I love those. So, but I also buy from, just from Hobby Lobby, I got some containers uh, that, and I just set these in there. I like to be able to flip through mine and see them. So that's how I store mine. But what I do is instead of dealing with this peel off at the bottom where it's always trying to stick and everything, I literally just cut the top off of the packaging. And then there you go. It goes in and out of that same packaging and you're good to go. So what do we know we're going to need? We know we're going to need our lollipops and we know we're going to need our little piece of candy there. And we're going to need the hat for the lady, uh, and I think that's all we need from that set right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in the package. Nah, right, I'll do it later. Let's keep rolling, let's keep rolling. Now we know we need, again, same thing here. I need, it's just a bunch of Hocus Pocus, and I need, I'm here for the candy. Now you can see the ones I've used and haven't used. I use archival, so you still got a little bit of that stain on there, kind of, Leaves a little mark, but that's okay. And then we're gonna come over here. And of course, we're gonna grab our two wonderful wicked hipsters. So I'm gonna grab her and we're going to grab him. There we go. Now, and he, all right, let's get these. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I got him backwards. Okay, he's gonna go over there with I'm here for the candy and those and she's gonna go over here just a bunch of hocus pocus got her got the hat okay so the great thing about this is i can look at this one while i do this one i i just can't get over the di I, I gotta tell you i'm loving the stain i'm just loving that natural shine from the stain on this wood um we may have to may have to spray one of those when those others dry and we take one well, let me see this one's probably um all right so here we go all right, so we know she is next. So what we need now is I use my good old Tim Holtz acrylic blocks. I love my acrylic blocks. She's kind of big. So we're going to need a bigger one. Let me see which one did we use. I think, I think we actually, yeah, I think we're actually going to use, we're going to use this one. Okay. And so all we're doing is matching, matching it up. Now, it looks like the stamp's too big, but as you can see, a little bit of the hair came off on the side there, but we're not worried about that. We're just going to line her up like that. I'm going to get her on the grid block, and she's ready to go. And I'm going to use this just as a guide to make sure that, again, that everything lines up just right. Okay? So, and then we're going to put the hat in there like that. So, here's that. So, let me come over here and grab my archival ink. Now, I will say, let me take a look. I do want to point this out as well. Um... Originally, when I stamped this, I think I used, I may have used ground espresso. I can't, I don't remember. Um, I think I did on her. That's why she looks a little bit lighter than him. It could be wrong. I think maybe on this one, we did go with the black soot. And it may have been on the pumpkin here. Oh, here we go. Let me go back and grab the pumpkin. Yes. So when I did this first pumpkin, all of this, the condemned, the undertaker, this is all in black soot, okay? But this is actually in, uh, this is actually in vintage photo. And you could do it with ground espresso and it would be a little bit darker brown. But if you notice the difference in colors, that brown and the black. So this is, this is ground espresso, or excuse me, this is um, uh, vintage photo. This is vintage photo and this is black soot. So, but on these, we're just using, on these, we're just using black soot. So, Got everything ready. All right, let's 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 flip him back over and get him ready to go. Okay, I'm going to turn her over. I don't know how you guys do your stamping. Um, I stamp from the top down. I like to be able to see the ink on my 
stamp. And once I can see, let me pull that up, it'd probably help where you guys can see that. Once I can see all the ink on my stamp, um, I will go ahead and stamp. Now I do a couple of different things. Let me see if I can find what I did with them. Um, I always liked, I'm always worried that I don't have enough ink on there. So I will do a test run. So this is, as you can clearly see, this was done with the ground espresso. This was done with the, um, I cannot remember my colors, vintage photo, vintage photo, ground espresso. Okay. But I'll stamp it. And if I like it and that lets me know I've got enough ink on there, then I will go ahead and stamp it on the wood because we're not using our stamping platform. So I can't line this back up. So let that sit for just a minute. Let's go ahead and make sure we got enough ink on there. We're going to do that. She is ready to go. We're going to come over here to our wood and we're just going to eyeball this beautiful lady and we are going to drop her right down on the top of the stamp and then just a little bit of pressure not cpr like tim says but i like the grid block because i can kind of rock it and feel it and know that i'm getting good pressure get that down and then off she goes look at that absolutely beautiful and you can already see the difference in the two backgrounds and even even makes even the black soot even come out a little bit more crisp so we're done with her so I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. Just wipe off the excess. We'll clean these later. I'm like Tim. I don't always clean my stamps. Uh, there's no need to, but I do want to make sure I get all of the ink off of her. She is done. She's good. We'll set her off to the side. And let's see. Uh, we need to put a hat on her. And we don't need... And go ahead and throw that on top of him. It will be using hat. Don't need that big of one for the hat. Let's grab this guy and we're just going to eyeball it again. We're just going to do the same thing we did there. Just throw that down. Okay. And we come over here and we're going to ink that up. I love these. I love the detail on these stamps. Tim, Tim's designs are just amazing. And I, I've fallen in love with, uh, it's just every time he comes out with something new, I'm just like, I can't, I can't I'm going to go broke. Uh, but uh, but I love the detail of his stamps. So we're just going to eyeball that, and there she goes. We're just going to press down, get a little feel in it, and then dismount. There you go. All done. And look at the difference already. Again, you can see the difference. You can see the difference. So we're done with the hat. Just wipe off the excess ink and pull that off. Set that aside. Now we have to... Oh, yeah, well, we do need to... It's just a bunch of hocus pocus. Is that gonna be big enough? That is not. So let's grab that. And that will be more than enough. And now we're going to ink up this one. It looks like I'm missing there, but I'm not because if you'll remember when he designed these, he designed them with texture. So that's actually done. That is good to go. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna line that up and we're going to set her down and there we go and you just want to have good eyes on this you could put marks you could do whatever you want to do but for me i just eyeball it and we just we just we just put it on and there you go and just like that we're done all right and boy i tell you i'm i'm gonna have to go grab some I, well i got do I, do I have the stain did i grab the stains spray oxide 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 did I not grab any of the, I'm going to have to go grab those stains because I, I gotta, I gotta try it now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta spray another piece of wood and see why that color came out different. And maybe it's, maybe I used two different colors. Either way, this, this shines more than this one. Okay. You've heard enough about that. Okay. That one is done. Let's set that one off to the side and put you there. And there you go. Look at that. And it is now reversible. Boom, boom. So what in the world would I do with something like that? Well, you could you could actually put a, some ribbon or string on it. You could hang it. Uh, you could put it, if you do a Halloween tree, you could put it on that. Uh, you can, whatever you want to do with it, make a little door hanger out of it. Um, you could, just whatever you want to do with it. Um, I'm actually probably going to wind up uh, uh, using like some tacky, something tacky and just put it on the wall. I'll probably wind up putting a, uh, gluing on a piece of ribbon or something and making it so I can hang it and then rotate it. But there you go. There's the, there it is. That one's good. That one's ready to go. And this one's actually going to, I'm not, I'm, I want to be careful with it because it is, I do want to make sure that that dries, 
but I need to see how I did this guy. So pretty much know how I did it. So we're just gonna set her over here so that she'll dry. We know that our gentleman is going to go on the bottom there. Okay. And we are going to get some stuff on him. So we're gonna make sure that he is clean before we try to stamp. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna get this guy going. Yeah, let's bring him and make sure I've got him oriented the right way. Let's come over here to the bottom and bam. Probably pressing a little harder than I need to, but it is on wood and I just want to make sure because again, there's no, there's no, there's no redoing on this. Oh yeah. Look at him. Oh goodness. Look at him. Okay. And I will point out something, and I don't know how this happened, but I'll show you. I will show you. All right, he is done. Let's put him back over here on his happy place. Um, you'll notice, I don't know what I did here, but you notice how dark this is, how it all kind of ran together and in the eyes. I don't know if I over-inked, I don't know if I pressed too hard, but I don't know what happened, but I lost some of the detail. It still looks okay to me but it just looks like I, it may have been wet. I don't know, but either way, you've got more detail here on this one than you do on this one, but this still looks good. So, but just be careful. Just be aware of that. Um, boy, that came out. Look at the detail, the little lines in the hair. Oh, oh goodness, 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 goodness. Wonderful Tim Holtz goodness. Okay. Now we are going to do, I'm here for the candy. We put that right on top of him. So we're going to line that up just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and grab a little block. Let's move this big one. We won't need it anymore. And let's throw our stuff around while we're at it. All right, here we go. Here we go. And then we're just going to eyeball it. And then we're going to go right over the top of him with that. I'm here for the candy. Okay, a little press. Love these grid blocks. Love these grid blocks. I'm here for the candy. Boom. We're just going to wing it. We're going to see what happens here. All right. Now this one I'm doing a little bit different. I'm tapping the stamp into the ink. and take a look at it. Looks good to me. Let's put you right there. Awesome. A little faded around the edge. Don't care. Don't care at all. Let's get some more ink on this guy. Looks good. Bring him over here, put you right there, and get a little get a little pressure. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there is that guy. And take that off. Let's grab our little, oh yeah. Let's grab our little piece of candy, a little piece of wrapped candy there. Let's put you, I'm gonna turn this where, yeah, let's put you right there. Oh. Beautiful. And let's see, yep, I'm gonna turn. You can turn your stamp, you can turn your hand, you can do whatever, you can turn your surface, whatever works for you. I just think this is gonna be a little easier. I don't know why I'm overthinking this, but there we go with the candy. Boom. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how it's done. She is dried, reversible, reversible. Look at that. That is how you do it. All right, so hope that inspires you guys. And as I said, we're gonna do a little bit more now. I uh, wanna try and encourage y'all. Let's grab some of these that have dried. Oh, let's, oh my goodness. <sighs> Look at that. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, and where I blotted it, those spots, it lifted and it, oh, I just, I, 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 I love it. I love it. I, I don't even know what to say. It's, it's, it's not an art form. There's, it's not, it's, oh, look at that. And then when we put the decayed on top of that, you can see it. I hope it shows up on the video. But that little bit of decay that went over the top of that um, 
uh, uh, over the top of, what was it, uh, the Hocus Pocus? Yeah, that was the Hocus Pocus. That one was fortunate. At the top of the Hocus Pocus, it just brought out that 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 goldy green kind of moldy look. Oh, this is, ah, this is all Halloween, all Halloween, all day long. Oh, those look so good. Okay, so we're going to see if I made a mistake or what happened. So this is the one we sprayed with, uh, I thought was oxide. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna flip that over and I'm actually gonna grab spray stain and I'm gonna go with spiced marmalade and fossilized amber. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that and that spray stain, this is not oxide, this is stain. And then we're gonna, and we're gonna hit that. And that was fossilized amber. And those are spray stains, okay? And I think that I may have accidentally, I'll have to go back and watch the video now, I think I may have accidentally grabbed the stain. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the top of this with some spiced marmalade spray oxide. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna see how it looks once it dries. And so let's just, there we go. And that's gonna be good. We're just gonna leave that. And I can see where that's sitting on top of the stain in a couple spots. So we're gonna leave that. We're just gonna see what happens here. I can actually already see the grain coming through better because I used the spray stain than we did on this side with the oxide. And as this dries, it is losing that shine, which is what I thought. So once again, uh, spray oxide, spray stain. Now I did just put that oxide over the stain, so that's gonna, that's gonna probably dilute some of that shine. But look at that wood grain coming through with the stain as opposed to the oxide. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you will get a different result using oxide and stain. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. We'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to this guy a little bit later and, uh, and we'll play with him. But for now, we're gonna do a little more stamping. Now this is the challenge here. I, I gotta tell you, this came out a lot darker, <laughs> a lot darker than I was expecting. So I'm trying to figure out what I wanna do with this. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do with these is, I'm gonna set these aside because I think I'm gonna come back with these later. Well, we could go ahead and spray the other side now. I'm gonna come back to these later and I think I'm gonna use some texture paste. So I'll make another video uh, once these are good and dry. I may go over these and use uh, one of my Halloween stencils or something. And we may we may come back and uh, with some texture paste. Do I have any good Halloween stencils? I think I got last year's Halloween stencils. Yep, there we go. We got some shifters, the Harlequin, the diamonds, and just some different ones, some nice grunge. Yeah, so we, we, we're gonna come back and, um, I think I'm gonna come back and revisit this with with some texture, maybe some grit paste, crypt paste. Um, maybe maybe I wanna add some embellishments to this. Maybe I wanna put some ephemera on this because this is such a such a dark background. I, I'm, I'm sure I could stamp on it. Mm. I just don't know. And you don't know till you try and I don't wanna waste this piece of wood. So we may stamp something on it, we, we, we'll see. Oh, you know what? We're not gonna see. We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out right now. All right. This is what Tim has done to me. Uh, you get an idea. I'll do that later. No, you won't. No, you won't. Do it now. Just go ahead and do it. All right. Let's grab this. I think if we're gonna one's gonna work, it's gonna have to be this one. So let's see. Um, I know it's not quite gonna fit. Actually, it's gonna be pretty close. Do I wanna go? Yep, yeah, I'm gonna go with, all right, we're gonna, let's, let's go with that one to start with. Uh, all right, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it kind of in a lighter area just to see what we get. So let's go ahead and ink this guy up. You don't know till you try. Let's see what we get. Boom. Again, not too much the CPR. Oh, wow. 
I actually got that a little crooked and I'm okay with that. Ooh, wow. I, 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 okay, yeah, well, well why not? Embrace the chaos. Let's go with an intentionally askew stamp down here. Get that ink on there. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. We're actually still gonna put, we're gonna do some more with this. This is just kind of becoming the background right now. This is just, I'm just gonna let this be the background. Um, I love this undertaker coffins, caskets, burial caskets, and burial robes. Let's 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 throw him in there, and then we may go grab one one of the. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Juicing that bad boy up, and let's let's put him right here. Yep, I love it. I love it. And it actually comes alive as you, as this dries. This will become a little more vivid. And as you depend on how you turn it. Oh, okay. We are gonna. I'm gonna show you what happens when we. I'm gonna go with ground espresso. Let's put this guy back over here. Uh, which one of these do I want to use? Do I want to try and you know? I kind of like this Red Cross drugstore. I feel like I can fit him. I feel like I can fit him right in there. So let's just show you what it looks like with the ground espresso. Why not? Probably gonna be a little bit more subdued in the background. I could be wrong. I could be right. Oh yes. <laughs> It is faded into the background. I, I like it. I stamped it over the darkest part of the background, but I, I, I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to, let's, let's put him up because I really, really, really want, love this little signature piece here. Let's just go ahead and do him in the ground espresso. And it just fades into the background. It, it just, ah, beautiful. All right. So uh, depending on the look you want, you'll you'll want to stick with the black soot, but I like the faded background. I Look at it. It's almost getting lost. You can see it barely. And when you turn it, the light hits it just right. You can really see it. it there's so much that goes on with these mica stains. And the, oh. There's so much depth to them. So I actually like that. And that's good for a background. So we like that. So we're good with that. Now we know. Now you know. Now I know. There you go. And once this is all dried and everything, I will go back and we'll we'll spray the back side of that. Uh, in the meantime, let's grab this one now. This one's a little bit lighter. And no, I think we're good for today. I think I'm good for today. I think that shows you everything I wanted to show you guys. Hopefully that inspires you to use these new mica stains with wood, with a wood blank, all right? And just, to, you, you don't, it's no, it, it works as well as on paper to me. In fact, I think to some degree, I like it better on wood. That texture, that, that feel. Um, and boy, the way I laid that out just came out so good. And you can really, as this dries, you can really start to see that decayed in there. Uh, anyways. So, all right, there you go, guys. I hope that encourages you again. Just grab your, grab your stuff and play. Remember the difference between the spray stain and the oxide. You're going to get that different look on the back of the wood. Let me go ahead and grab this guy that was over here drying. Take one last look at him. There's the oxide. And there's the stain. And you can see it, even though I put oxide over the top of that. You can see that. There's the oxide. And there's the stain. And again, Look, you, you look at you can see the stain goes into the wood. It doesn't. It 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 just you can see that uh, uh, 
pattern of the wood, a little bit of shine to it. Even when I sprayed the oxide over it, it didn't really, it didn't really seem to have done anything. Uh, I didn't lose anything. So I, I think, I don't think we messed it up. But, but again, when you spray with the oxide there, you, you, you don't get the shine and you lose some of the texture of the wood. So your choice, your choice. And again, uh, you can, when you're working with wood, of course, you can always use distressed paints and get kind of a, a weathered look. Uh, we'll do that in another video, I'm sure, because I love my distressed paints. But I hope this encourages you guys, uh, as always, to get out there and create. As Tim says, just start playing. Just, just, just go ahead. Just grab your, grab what you have, and have fun with it. Uh, just, just, just have fun with it. Um, ooh, I know what we're doing. Yeah, these moths are going to wind up all over this bad boy. Yeah, this is going to be a yeah. Okay, sorry, got distracted. Use what you have. Play with it. Have fun. Remember. Uh, I'm firmly convinced that one of the greatest gifts we've been given from God is the ability to create. So create, have fun, enjoy what you're doing. Try not to be a crabby crafter. Uh, that is a play on words. I did, I did do that for a reason. I'm not that crabby. I don't think so. I could be wrong. But nevertheless, as always, this is the Crabby Crafter, Pastor Ian, saying thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed day.